attempted that one. She will be delighted with that clearance, Holly Bradshaw. 4.51 so far tonight. At lunch, we were chatting to her and her coach. And then she said, literally, they'd be happy to clear one bar tonight. Well, she's cleared three. 4.51 might be her best return for the evening. Well, that pole vault up on the top bend. And we'll just pause because uh, they'll have half an hour the start of this 5,000 metres while everybody is introduced. And we're looking forward to another great race. We've had some brilliant races so far. So Chep the guy, the Olympic champion, just going past him there. That's not him. <laughs> He's uh, to the left. That's Bikili, who himself is in great form. 12.46. And then Selman Baregas, who got the Olympic 5,000 metre champion, the Olympic 10,000 metre champion. It's just two of the names. And then the world record holder of a 5K on the road, Aragawi. Edris, former world champion, can he start to give himself a chance of even getting selected for Ethiopia? You would imagine with all of their talent and ability at the moment that that's going to be tough. There's Cheptegai. We had been hoping to see Kip Limo here, but told that uh, I think it was a statement was given that personal issues took him back home. He had hoped. He says he's in great shape, was really looking forward to racing with Cheptegai here. But we're going to see him in Monaco in a couple of weeks' time. But for now... Let's concentrate on who's here tonight. Chep de Guy taking on the Ethiopians and one or two others as well. Quick pace has been asked for, for under 13 minutes, but we've kind of got used to that as though it's just expected that they're going to go under 13 minutes. But the meeting record, 12.55, 23. That is actually held by Edris in the race here. So pacemaking and the lights, of course, will be helping them to do that. That's almost exactly 62 second laps, Tim. Yes, Edris, a bit of an enigma. He, uh, one of the biggest surprises I can remember for many, many years was his coming out winning, retaining his world title in Doha in 2019. He was, he'd shown no form at all that season, and yet uh, he produced a spectacular finish to win in the Qatari capital. I'll be interested to see how Chep's guy goes here, Steve, the world champion at 10,000 metres. Got enormous strength. I would imagine he'll want to use that here and make it tell perhaps over the last mile or so, the last four laps, because there's plenty of fellas here who have got very, very quick legs when it comes to the last 400 metres. He might want to try and take that out of their legs, take the sting out of their legs in the second half. Yeah, he, you know, he, was, he was found wanting for speed, wasn't he, in that race in front? But, you know, let's not forget, he's been injured, he's been coming back. I think he'll be, he will have, that race in Florence, actually, I thought was really good. I think, you know, it was so quick. And yes, there are people who are flying, you know, with, with um, Katia Kajalcho in that. We, so maybe a step forward in this one from what we saw in Florence. So they're all looking at him. He's the one to beat here tonight. You're right. At some point when the pace has dropped, it's how strong does Chapter Guy feel? Can he take it on? Your point about Edris is a good one, though, isn't it? Because I think the Ethiopians are kind of, they, they give him this opportunity because of what he's done in the past to build himself into the team. But he, you do have to run fast. They had their 10,000 meter trial, didn't they, in Spain, wasn't it, last week? Yeah. And But the 5,000 is about who runs quickest, really, <laughs> more often than not. And yes, they have to go back to their jump. Edris is a racer. Yes. He's not a yes. time trialist. On the, on the other hand, so many of these 5,000 races these days, Steve, and actually the 1500s with Inge Britson, and he's coming up later on, you don't have any choice but to be in a time trial in effect. There's the racing now, the racing, the art of racing has been much diminished in recent years because these athletes of this era run so hard, generally from the gun on the majority of occasions. 234 that first kilometre, that is quick. They were looking for 235, so that's really good pacemaking. Yes, yeah, spot on. Uh, the lights uh, certainly help these days. The pacemakers don't misjudge things. And Tim's point that you know, you don't have this in the in the major championships. I'm just wondering how long before we don't see lights in the Olympics and the World Championships. That'll be really interesting. Not pacemakers, but certainly wave lights. That will be something which I wouldn't be too surprised if that happens in the not too distant future. Anyway. At the moment, the pacemakers are doing a, a great job. They're well strung out, as you'd expect, at this pace. I think the thing is always what happens in the third and fourth kilometre, or certainly the fourth kilometre, when perhaps the pacemakers aren't there. Who's going to take it on? Who's going to try and keep up with the lights, keep the pace hot? Back to this long jump. Now Ten Toglu. He has the lead. 8.05 in the first round. The only man over eight metres. Can he do it again? That looks close. 
That looks close. He is fabulously consistent. This is not, in truth, a vintage era for the long jump, but Tentoglu there in the second round, 8.07. Now, Ehammer was 7.82 as opener, and he improves there to 7.97. So while he moves forward and gets closer to eight meters, Tentoglu moves slightly further beyond the eight meter line, and the gap between them, 10 centimeters at the moment. Here's Nairn, Laquan Nairn of the Bahamas. 8.10 this year is his best. He is an 8.22 jumper. That's from last year. That's a gold medal from the Commonwealth Games, just Nairn. And he's in fourth, 7.80 in the second round. Well, we mentioned all eyes on check the guy. Pace is still good and he's up there. But uh, let's get back to that Ethiopian uh, conundrum, if you like. When you, you know, Berega and Aragar, we had a brilliant race in that 10,000 meter trial. Finished first and second. They were, to be fair, it was between them two. They were well ahead of everybody else. So they're, they're settled. They know they're going to go in the 10,000 meters and would love, of course, to be in the 5,000, I'm sure. There's Berega, but Bekele's the one who's in great form this year. Bekele is really throwing himself in there. And when you look at, we know Kajelch is not here tonight, right at the top of the world rankings as well. So they've got an embarrassment of riches at the 5,000 meters in particular. So for Edris to force his way in somehow, it would have to take something amazing. And uh, well, tonight he's uh, certainly sitting much further back than the others. There he is. He's a lovely fella, Steve. I was chatting to him at a road race in India. There he is, the left of picture in the dark strip. Edris speaks reasonably, reasonably good English. And I'm so relaxed, a nice fella, but I'm just wondering if his best days are behind him. At 29 now, as you said, there is so much young, fresh, aggressive talent coming out of Ethiopia that is ready to experiment and run against, run hard against the clock. Another sub-62 lap spot on at the front, but the pacemakers have gone already. So it's Arigawi taking it up from Bikele. Arigawi fresh from that big 10,000 meter race I just mentioned. Gebriwen hanging in there, which is great. You might hear the crowd getting excited because Johan Reis is trying to break the Swiss record that's been held for a goodness knows how long for Marcus Griffel, and that's around 13.7. And he's got a set of lights just for himself in red, and he's way ahead at the minute of the Swiss record. Early stages for him, but we'll keep an eye on that as well. Uh, that's what the crowd are really getting into, but they're also watching at the front. Right, back to this long jump, and the Philip Pravdicha. Now, oh, big stutter there, big clip. Well, cutting in the stride before that second round effort. He's that jump 765 is opener. Remember, Tentoglu leads with 807 in round two. Ehammer, so I'm in Ehammer, the Swiss athlete, in second, 797 in round two. Pravdicha there, 783 in round two, puts him into third place. European champion Wilma Murtu of Finland in the pole vault. Second attempt, 461, and she gets it. Well, these women pole vaulters really are entertaining the crowd on that top bend. A very, very high standard in terms of the uh, women who are here. And it would be great to see a few of them take this bar higher tonight. We've had some wonderful competitions here in Lausanne over the years. I remember one night with Lisek and you know, just uh, that backdrop, the sky and the cityscape in the background as well. But what? Tim, this, this, <laughs> this race is 5,000. Aragawi has picked the pace up in a way which I don't think many would be expecting. And uh, Edris is hanging on to the back of that group, but they're already breaking it up. Chep the guy starting to struggle. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, Chep the guy sweating up a lot there. And Aragawi, but the 2K time was 5.09. Look at that, 2.32, third kilometer. Boy, oh boy, really quick at 3,000 meters. They've gone through 3,000 in 7.41. And this is a world record tempo now. Yeah, he threw in a 59 and then a 60 to follow that. This is hurting and Czech the guy was pretty smart. He knew he had to get round. Uh, uh, it wasn't Aragawi, was it? It was Berega. He had to get round him. Gebby Wett is still in there, but Keely is still there. And Czech the guy had to quickly move around Berega because he could see the gap appearing foot down from Aragawi, really pushing hard. As I mentioned, that 10,000 meter performance was brilliant, but it was a close race between himself and Borrega. But this time, look at that, Borrega struggling, he's gone. These four pulling away, and look where the lights are. Those green lights are meant to be the 12.55, but 
Well, they're way ahead of that, but still got four laps to go. Well, I tell you what, this is spectacular running mid-race. Boy, oh boy. It's like getting a slap in the chops mid-race. 61 that lap, Steve. He's last run the last 1,200 metres. Not much outside three minutes. I mean, it's insane running. The world record, just as a quick check for you there, remember, is 12.35 by Cheptegar in Monaco three years back. I'm not sure that's really under threat, but these splits would suggest that on another day, Aragawi may threaten it. Well, Bikili is still there. They're certainly heading for well under 12.50, but it's become the norm now, isn't it? 12.41, that race between Kajelcha and Kiplimo. Bikili wasn't too far behind in Oslo, 12.46. But here we have Gebrewet back. Gebrewet, you know, the man who a few years ago we thought could go on and dominate, and he's there. Check the guy, hanging on the best he can, the Olympic champion. And he knows that this is quick. He knows that this is hard, but with three to go, he's still there. Little gap appearing between Bikili and Gebrewet is he starting to struggle and Chep the guy says, yes, you are. I'm going past you. I need to hang on to those two. And that lap a 60.8. I mean, this is unbelievable running. The way the distance and middle distance running scene has changed this last two or three years, it's astonishing. And the gap's beginning to grow. And Aragawi just keeps pummeling away. He's determined to break them. Check to guy, the world record holder there, left a picture in third place. He is struggling, Steve. He's hanging on to their coattails. But I'll tell you what, all credit to Bekele because he's looking strong, isn't he? 12.46 in Oslo a couple of weeks back. And he's got his own pacemaker at the moment. Tim, we've seen them do this. But if he ran 2.27, then... You know, we're, in, we're in for something under 12.40. There's only, what, four men have ever gone under 12.40? Check the guy himself, Bekele, Gebri Selassie and Daniel Coleman. And Aragao is pulling away. Check the guy manages to sneak past Bekele. You can't say that's a sneak. It's got to work. And all of a sudden, Gebri Wett's gone. Bekele is gone. Now Aragao, only one man left. The Olympic champion, the world record holder behind him. Can he get rid of him as well? He is absolutely charging, as Tim said. This is remarkable running off what was already a pretty quick pace. That lap was a 60.4. It's insane. They're moving at almost four-minute mile pace. Aragawi glancing up at the big screen. Look, so relaxed, sweating up. Yes, Czech guy has found the second wind, hasn't he? He's got, it's almost like there's a, an elastic between the two, and he's just hanging on there. But he's paying really close attention to Aragawi now. I don't know if Aragawi's team with 500 run is tiring or just slowing on purpose, gathering himself for that finish. Well, they are heading for something incredible here. The world record is out of sight, but check the guy in Aragal, we are going to run two of the quickest 5,000s, hopefully this year, but maybe of all time. A 56 lap would take them as a world lead and perhaps under 1240. Check the guy and Aragawi locked together. That was an attempt from Check the guy to go past. Aragawi says, no, you're not. I've held this. I've done the hard work. I've been the one pushing on. You're not going to get past me here. And he gets a two meter lead. But Check the guy is a great champion. He's hanging in there. He's trying to just say, I can stay to the last 200 and I think I can get you. Aragawi kicks again. Head down, arms up, trying to pump them through. He looks tired to me though. Check the guy's coming back again. Here he comes. Check the guy, the Olympic champion, with one more big effort. Can he get past Aragawi? The crowd are on their feet in the home straight. Aragawi goes again. This is incredible. Aragawi is going to win it. He's going to be rewarded with an incredibly quick time. Aragawi, 12.40.45. An incredible race, well-deserved victory. The time, not under 12.40. However, he jumps up the all-time list, goes ahead of Kajelcher and Kip Limo, who had that great race in Oslo. And boy, are we being spoiled. That, when you know, it was set up at 12.55, and you, you wonder, Tim, why if Aragawi thought he could run this quick, maybe why he didn't ask for the pace to be a bit quicker. He didn't need it though, he did it all himself and the pacemakers dropped out.